your next act coming to the stage, contestant number three. He's been doing a tour of the West Coast and uh, a lot of other things. Very, very funny man. He's been a... Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you may have seen him on VH1 and the Disney Channel. A big round of applause for Mr. Mark McMahon. Good evening. Gosh, it's great to be here. I just got back from the improv in LA. Had to pay 11 bucks to get in there. <laughs> no, it is nice to be here in Sacramento. I, I, I went and did some shopping this afternoon. I got here a little bit early. I went to the Price Club. Th this is not your ordinary loaf of bread, quarter milk kind of place. You know what I'm talking about? Honey, I'm stopping at the store. Can I pick you up anything? Uh, yeah, could you get me, uh, 10,000 styrofoam cups? <laughs> A 37-pound bag of M&M's? <laughs> and a six-pack of Drano? Because, honey, we just can't afford to pass up values like these. <laughs> you know what I saw when I was there? I couldn't believe this. I saw a kid on a leash. Have you seen these before? Have you been on one before? I can't believe it. It's become socially acceptable. You know, when it becomes socially acceptable to keep them in a kennel for two or three weeks at a time, I'll be ready to start my family. No, but I love kids. I love kids. Especially toddlers. I like to take flash pictures of them. So I can watch them chase the white spot. Bazooka, chewing ice cubes, and opening bottle caps with your teeth. 
because I can use the business. <laughs> it's tough, I'm telling you, it's really tough. I had, a, I had a lady in my office last week. I finished the treatment on her, I said, Mrs. Stevens, we're all done, how does that feel? She looks up at me and she says, well, doctor, it still feels a little rough. I can feel it right here with my tongue. I said, well, I don't see anything. Uh, let me see if I can feel it. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> Patients come to my office. They don't want good dental care. They just want to get high. <laughs> doc, doc, you use laughing gas? Well, yes, I do, but I don't give it to my patients. <laughs> you want gas? Go to Gordo's and have a burrito already. <laughs> Had another guy sort of like that. He says, Doc, you know, I think I'm going to need something for the pain tonight. You know, like uh, maybe you could turn me on to some Percodan or uh, morphine. Uh, anything that goes good with tequila. It is tough, though. It's tough. You know, because nobody likes to go to the dentist. I, have, I had a woman in my office recently. She says, Doctor, you know, I'd rather have a baby than have my teeth filled. I said, well, you're going to have to make up your mind because I'm going to need to adjust the chair. <laughs> It's, you know what the hardest thing for me is finding good people to work for me. I, I hired some new people recently. I hired this lady. I figured that she'd be very intelligent, very easy to train because she was a stewardess. She just quit a job as a stewardess. But still to this day, whenever the patients come in, she sits them down in the chair, she stands up right in front of them, and she says, welcome to your 3.30 appointment. It will be nonstop cleaning and checkup. Please check at this time to be sure your napkin is fastened securely on your chest. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about your mouth at this time. There are four wisdom teeth, two on the top and two on the bottom. In the event of an unexpected painful episode, a laughing gas mask will fall from the ceiling. Place it over your mouth and breathe deeply. Very soon you will be flying the friendly skies. And for your safety and the safety of those around you, please remain in your chair until the dentist has come to a complete halt or has turned on the overhead rinse and spit sign. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's one more thing I'd like to talk about before I end my part of the show. And that's something that's very, very important to me, very near and dear to my heart. No, it's not oral gratification. <laughs> We're talking nasal gratification. I can see some kinky thoughts going through some minds over here. No, but I'm talking about sneezing. How many of you like to sneeze? It's like a little miniature instant orgasm. It's like, it's like. Uh, 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 you don't have to get anybody else involved. You can do it outdoors, you can keep your clothes on, and when you're done, perfect strangers will bless you. <laughs> and you know, the way you sneeze is directly related to the way you make love. For instance, some women are very petite, like, Then there are the lucky ladies who have multiple sneezes. <laughs> but when I sneeze, I like to get into it. I like to loosen up. I like to take it, cover your drinks for this one. I like to take a deep breath and loosen up 
But you know, you never look any dumber than when you're... <laughs> Coming up with a great big one. <laughs> and you lose it. Thank you very much. My name is Mark McMahon.